Hello and welcome back. My name is Dr. Christopher Gennari and this is Great Big History Podcast. In this episode, we are moving from the Reformation to science. So we're changing the question about who controls knowledge or who controls the truth or what is the truth. And so science starts as a reaction to the violence of the Reformation. The Reformation's question was, who knows God? And the answer is, uh, 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 because you could point to all kinds of places in the Bible and say, you know what God really is like. But for a group of people who survived the trauma of the Reformation, remember, 30 million plus people will die. Germany will be ripped asunder, right? Entire armies will be on the move, destroying places. Um, France, Britain will have civil wars. Um, Italy and Spain and Portugal will have their inquisition. So the entire Europe just goes undergoes this tremendous trauma over who knows God better. And so the people who are going to invent science are the people who are like, we want answers to questions. We want proof to questions, to answers. We want to know what is really true. And so the language of science will become math. Why? Because it's dispassionate. It's also right or it's wrong. Two plus two equals four. How many times? Every time. Now, I know a couple of you are out there with your quantum physics, but we are not at quantum physics yet, so ignore that. Two plus two equals four with always. Thank you. But math is dispassionate. It's right or it's wrong. I like being a history professor because it has great stories and it's got emotion. But you know what? I would love to grade math tests. Because I would be able to say, you're wrong, and not have to have an argument over what they really meant was. No, 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 professor, what, what you don't understand. What I really mean is the square root of 32 is a dispassionate analysis of uh, people's culture in popular literature. No, it's either right or it's freaking wrong. Now, I know my math colleagues will kind of roll their eyes at that analysis, but how many fights do you have over square roots in your entire life? Have you ever got into a fist fight over a division or math or, or multiplication problem? Never, never. If you're going to have a fight with a professor over the content of the class. It might be science. Like biology. Oh, I'm not, I'm not dissecting this frog. This frog is a living being. I'm not pulling its organs out. Right? It might be sociology. You can't take 500 people and know what's going on with them. This is all, all averages. It's not individuals. It's definitely history. I'm called wrong on every topic in this class. But it's not math. Square root of 64 is 8. That's the way it is. So math is the language of science. Because the Latin or Greek or the language of argument of religion got 30 million people dead. More. The second thing is the scientific method. You want to prove it's right? There's a method. It's right and it's verifiable. And for it to be science, it has to be right 100% of the time and other people have to be able to prove it. Just because you did it one time doesn't mean anything. It has to be done every time by anybody who tries it. And that becomes a scientific method. For science to be science, it has to be right 100% of the time. Why? 
Why does it have to be right 100% of the time? Because traditions might be wrong. Because who are the scientists arguing with? The church and the Greeks and the Romans, people who everyone assumed was right. You want to tell people Aristotle is wrong? Really? Aristotle is the smartest man who ever lived, according to people in the Middle Ages. If he said it, it was, it was right. And now Galileo is going to come along and say he's wrong? Dude, that is some cojones on you, man. That is bold saying. That is bold barbecue sauce to say Aristotle is wrong. Because everybody knows it's right. It's like the 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 Kalisar in the first season of Game of Thrones. And Khaleesi is like, like, how do you know? And it's and the women look at her and go, it is known. It just is. Plato, Aristotle, and the Bible are right. This is not hard. And here comes Galileo saying, No, it's wrong. Here comes Darwin. We still have arguments over this. Here comes Darwin saying. You know what happens in Genesis 1 and 2? It's not right. Human life is one, much older than 7,000 years, and two, um, animals adapt and change over time. Like, people were okay with the seven days not being correct, and it's over a longer period of time, but the idea was when humans were made, they were human. They were homo sapiens sapiens. They looked like humans. They acted like humans. They thought like humans. Darwin's like, yeah, no. Turns out, things change. The bodies change. Pieces of you change. Humans are not humans. There's something different. And they came from something else. So you're like, whoa, 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 whoa. Hook with what is going on inside your body. Basic biology is arguing with Galen. The ancient, the ancient um, doctor and scientist of what, how the body worked. Like, these were assumptions people knew were right. Like, the sky is blue. Yeah, I know. Yeah, and then Galileo comes along and says, it's not blue. You're like, what are you talking about? So if you're going to argue with the knowledge everyone assumes is right, and you're going to say it's wrong, you, buddy, better be right all the time. So what they use is new technologies. These new technologies allow you to extend your senses. Hook is looking at uh, red blood cells. Galileo is seeing the moons of Jupiter. Why? Why does that matter? Hook is using a microscope to look at red blood cells. Well, why? Well, because when you cut yourself and you bleed... What do you see? You're like, oh, I see blood. But uh, yeah, 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 yeah. But what form is that? Is that a solid? Is it a gas or is it a liquid? Obviously, it's a liquid. Obviously. And yet, Hook looks at red blood cells, looks at blood under the microscope, and it turns out it's not a liquid. It's a billion solids moving against each other. In this plasma sauce that you, when you see it with your eyes, so your eyes are not seeing reality. Red blood, your blood is actually billions of solids, tiny solids moving against each other. It's not a liquid. The moons of Jupiter, right? If you look up in the night sky, and in class, I'll show you this little video, but I can't do it for, for a host of copyright reasons on um, YouTube. But if you look up at the night sky and you just sit there and watch, you will watch the stars turn. Now, you have to go to a place where it's dark, out west, the central central part of Pennsylvania. You got to go a place away from people. But you can watch the night sky. And if you watch the night sky, it turns. So obviously... The Earth is the center of the universe because you look up at the night sky and everything turns around it. And let's also face it, if you're a Christian, you think the Earth is the center of the universe because we're here and God created Earth for people and people are the most important thing God ever created. Where would you put that in the universe? Obviously in the center. So the assumption was 
And all of the facts people had available to them was the universe turned around the Earth. Galileo sees the moons of Jupiter with a telescope. And you go, so what? Well, if there's moons of Jupiter, they're spinning around Jupiter, they're turning around Jupiter. If they are turning around Jupiter, they are not turning around the Earth. Which means the universe isn't turning around the Earth. Everything in the universe isn't turning around the Earth. So the question then becomes, what is spinning around the Earth? Anything? And they'll figure it out. The moon. It's the moon. The moon spins around the Earth. They got that. What else? Comets? The sun? Oh, it turns out the Earth is going to spin around the sun. That the Earth isn't that important in the universe. That's just one of many planets. And the planets are not spinning around the Earth. All of the planets are spinning around the sun. And then, it, and then that raises a huge question. Why? If God, why would God make the Earth the third planet, that's not that important, and then spin it all around the sun? That makes no sense. Well, we'll talk about that. Because that gets us to Newton. So we have this new technology. We have this attitude that's going to change the world. And then, they're, and then, but it's nerdy, right? People don't really care. It's not that it's not important. It's just, it's not, it's, it's, a, it's a subculture. These scientists are talking to other scientists and they're making some arguments and some of these ideas are breaking through. But like, remember, Galileo got in trouble with the Catholic Church. Now, that is not because the Catholic Church was dumb. Galileo got in, in trouble with the Catholic Church because the Catholic Church was going through the Reformation. And the Catholic Church defended Aristotle. Because, remember, they were the keepers of knowledge. And knowledge was the Bible plus the Greeks and Romans. So, here comes Galileo saying Aristotle is wrong about this one thing. But the question that the church didn't want asked was, if Aristotle is wrong about this one thing, could he be, what else is he wrong about? And if he's wrong, and the Catholic Church is saying he's right... What else is the Catholic Church wrong about? You see, it opens up this Pandora's box of people asking questions at a time the church can't handle a lot of questions being asked because it's under it feels under siege from the Reformation. And so it, it takes Arist it takes Galileo, puts him on trial, and says, Look, just admit you're wrong. Just say you're wrong. Just say Aristotle was right and you were wrong. You made your stuff up. And Galileo's like, no, man, I, I can't say that. It's true. Here, take a look through the telescope. And they're like, no, 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 I'm not going to look through your devil device. No, because remember, if you look and you see it, then you have to, now you're lying. Up to the point where you look through the telescope, you can, you can say Galileo's wrong. The moment you look through the telescope and you see it for yourself, either your eyes are lying, the machine is lying, or you have to now lie. So nobody wants to look at it. No one wants to look through that telescope and see, which is going to be ironic because some of the best telescopes in the world are run by the Catholic Church today. But be that as it may. So they put Galileo on trial, right? And they're saying, Galileo, just admit you're wrong. And he says, no. And they say, Galileo, if you don't admit you're wrong, we're going to have to torture you and break your legs until you admit we're Italian here. You're, you're going to have to admit you're wrong. And so Galileo says, okay, 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 okay. I'm wrong. I made it all up. It's all a lie. Catholic Church says, thanks. Um, we're going to break your telescope. You're not allowed to use it anymore. And, um, you know, go back to your home. Go back to your hometown. And just, like, don't write anymore. And Galileo's fine. This sucks. And then the story goes, and I love this story because the, 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 the bold barbecue sauce of Galileo Gets, gets off the thing, gets off the stand, gets off the trial, has admitted that he made it all up. He's walking back past the judges or the, the prosecutors or the priests. It's all, there's different stories. Because this is apocryphal. It probably didn't happen, but it's great. It's so good, it should. And it's, he's walking past them, and he's like, it still moves. And he walks out. 
still moves. The barbecue sauce on this guy. Why? Because he's like, you can't lie. It does what it does. The earth moves. You can try to pretend that it's not. And it don't matter. The earth doesn't give a shirt about what you think about it. And this is the problem we have today with climate change. The earth is getting hotter. Carbon dioxide in the atmosphere is making the, ho- the, the planet hotter. It just is. It's not a conspiracy. It's not something that the earth does on its own. Because the time frame has been in a hundred years, not a million years. Yes, has the earth gone through warming and cooling periods? Yes, but not in a hundred years. The earth simply doesn't think that way. The earth has been around for billions of years. Its climate doesn't change in a hundred years unless something crazy is going on with it. Like it gets hit with a freaking asteroid. The size of Manhattan. We've changed it. All of the science says so. And yet there are people who are like, no, 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 it has to be a lie. Because if it's not a lie, I have to change. I can't, I can't, I can't drive my SUV and my Hummer. I can't consume all the electricity I want. I'm going to have to change. I don't want to change. Science don't care. It's still getting hotter. Galileo's modern response is, it's still getting hotter. And nothing you can do to ignore that is going to change the fact it's getting hotter. Science doesn't care what you think. And that is the glory of science. That is what, why it was invented. It was invented to get around philosophy, to replace philosophy, which is what it does. Philosophy up to this point is science. Plato, Aristotle, Socrates, they're not, they're talking about ethics, but they're talking about how does the world work. They are science. Now philosophy is a class you may never take, which talks about how to live the good life. And what do you think about thinking? And other important stuff but it doesn't explain how the world works. Science does that. Your science class does that. That's what science is doing. It's replacing Socrates, Plato, and Aristotle, and the Bible to explain how the world works. And its argument is the truth doesn't care what you believe. It's the truth. But until Newton... It's not that big of a deal. It is Newton that sells science. Newton is the sexy scientist celebrity. He is the man who makes science cool and sexy. He he is so awesome when Peter the Great, who's not yet Peter the Great, Peter Romanov, leaves Russia, the first czar to leave Russia. He comes to England. He's in disguise, but everyone knows who he is. And the king is like, oh, you're, you're, this, you're, you're, you're this traveler from Russia, right? He's like, yes, I am. Uh, but treat me really well. And the king is like, what would, you like to, who, what would you like to see? Would you like to see my naval yards? He's like, no. Would you like to see my factories? No. I want to meet that man, Newton. That's what Peter Romanoff wanted to meet. That man, Newton. He made science cool. He made science sexy. He had a broad curiosity. He invents calculus on a bed. He's drinking. He's got a drinking buddy. He's in between semesters and his drinking buddy. They're getting stoned. You know, they're smoking some, some tobacco from the new world. And they're like, and his friend's like, dude, dude. And, you know, if you went to sleepaway college, you'd have conversations like this over like chicken wings and beers. And you'd be like, dude, I don't get it. We all know the circle is the most perfect of all forms. Because Plato told us that. But we know the circle is the most important of all forms. It's the most perfect, man. It's the same lengthwise and widthwise and depthwise. It's it's perfect. So why the fork are planets in an ellipse? Like the math says they're in an ellipse. We observe it. We're in an ellipse. 
Why aren't we in a circle, man? And if you think about it, if you still do, like I had elementary school when they had the planets or kids would draw planets, they draw circles. They don't draw ellipses with its slingshot idea. They draw circles like the natural way the planets revolve around the revolve around the sun. Even if you like first you admit, all right, the planets are revolving around the sun. We still draw circles. And yet that's not how it works. So the, his friend is like, dude, why? why? And Newton's sitting there. He's probably on his fourth beer. And he's like, I don't know, man. I got no idea. I'm going to figure it out. And he invents calculus to figure this out. Remember, he was also like 25 years old at this point. He's invented gravity, he's invented momentum, and then he comes up with calculus, and he then turns 26. But that's his broad, broad curiosity. He's going to look at the world, at all kinds of things. He invents physics and momentum and gravity. Like, he, 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 he doesn't invent momentum and gravity. He knows momentum and gravity are existing, Right? Their movement, and there he's explaining movement. So he kind of invents gravity, but it's a physical force. It already exists. He just didn't have a name. But to explain how these things work, he invents basically physics and uses the math of calculus to do it. Now, why does this matter? It's because it means the universe is predictable. You can explain how things move. You can predict the future. Like if you work for NASA, if you're an engineer for NASA, you want to shoot a rocket, you want to shoot a spaceship to Pluto, you have to know where it's going to be in 15 years. And they did it. They hit it. They hit the freaking Pluto, the farthest major object that we knew of in the universe. And 12 years later, bang, it was Pluto was right where it was supposed to be. And the spaceship was right where it's supposed to be. And boom. We got images of Pluto. How awesome is that? But it means the universe is predictable. And that's new. That's new because that tells you God's not involved. It doesn't mean God doesn't exist. But it means God set up the rules of the universe and is letting it go. God doesn't get involved. Which is good because it means the universe is predictable. It's bad because God doesn't get involved. Really? Like, Jesus is getting involved. The saints get involved. We pray. We pray for God to get involved. God might not get involved. Now, if you're a Christian, you, you have the miracle, right? If you're, if you're, if you're monotheistic, uh, Christian, Jewish, or, or Muslim, you pray have a concept of miracle. Well, what is a miracle? A miracle is God interacting with the world. It's, it's, it's the rules of physics being bowed around God. Because what is a miracle? It is literally a thing that happens that cannot be explained by the laws of physics. I'm driving at 100 miles an hour. I go through the barrier. I fall off the bridge and I say, oh God, save me. And I wake up in my bed. That's a miracle. It clearly happened. And yet, can I explain how that happened? Nope. That's a miracle. It is God getting involved. So there's still room for God. But it also means people can understand the universe. And if you can understand the universe, you can understand God. Since God made the universe and Newton is a theologian he believes in god his book the principia or principia mathematica in fact has a proof of god existing he took saint thomas aquinas's proof who took a proof from aristotle so aristotle proves that the gods exist right that the universe is created saint thomas aquinas proves the god jehovah exists and created the universe and what, but he's Catholic and middle e medieval. And so what Newton does is take that and goes to the next step. He makes it more modern. He makes it scientific. 
and he uses Aristotle and St. Thomas Aquinas to prove God exists. The Principia Mathematica is a philosophical book more than a math book, proving people can understand the universe. And what this initiates, Newton probably didn't know what he was doing when he was writing the Principia Mathematica, was, in, was starting the age of man. No longer were you on God's stage because now you could understand that it was a stage. You could understand how it was put together. You could understand how it works. You could understand all the levers, which meant you can now use it yourself. You can get the universe to work for you. You can understand how it works. Perhaps you can control it. And this starts until basically 1920, but certainly 1945. Modernism, the age of man. The world will get better. People will get richer. People will get smarter. The world will be more understood as time goes by. And it's not to the massive death and destruction of the world wars that people start going, maybe that's not right. The nuclear age, maybe we should stop science. Maybe not all inventions are good, i.e. mustard gas, sarin gas. Maybe we should do something else. But that's in part three of our course. But for right now, you have, you have transitioned from the age of God, explaining the universe, to the age of man. All right, thank you very much. See you soon. Be safe.